now. So, um, welcome Marie, hi. Um, hi. Um, thank you so much for agreeing to, to do this with me. Um, for anybody viewing, my name's Christian McNeil and I'm a Three Principles facilitator based in Glasgow. And um, Marie McQuaid is a friend and colleague um, who's involved in this work, but is also the director of a charity. Um, and both of us have had the experience of being single parents. And that's the um, really the, the sort of starting point of today's conversation. And we thought it might be interesting um, to other people who are finding themselves in that situation. If we were to share some of our experiences and um, you know what, what, we've, what we've learned and how the, an understanding of the three principles has been helpful. So um, just before we started recording, I, I, I was um, I, I was remembering, um, you know, I, I, it was a long time ago that, that now that I became a single parent um, back in the year 2000 and my children were then four and five and they're now they've now both graduated university and are starting jobs and so on. Um, Mm -hmm. They are, they are, they really are. And I had no idea, I, you know, I, at that point in time, it was, it was a devastating thing for me because it was very close to, to my heart. What I really wanted was to have a happy nuclear family as I saw it, you know, and although I had other achievements in life, you know, career and in qualifications, all that sort of stuff, you know, the, the, this is probably the thing that was closest to my heart. And when, when it failed, when the relationship failed and I found myself my own my kids it was really I found it heartbreaking I, I found the the responsibility overwhelming and I was just the, the, the thing that just came back to me recently was I was kind of casting around for help and, and, and support and I found it very very difficult to get that and I, I went to gingerbread which is a lone parent charity in, in, in Edinburgh where I lived and I remember saying to you know I went along to the the, the, the headquarters and I said you know is there anything like you know support groups for single parents I said well no not anymore there were but they all found new partners and left so even gingerbread didn't have anything and there's that sort of cliche that I think that women um often talk about you know that that it's like you find out who your friends were. And at that point in time, in my case, there weren't many. There weren't many left. Um, and it was, a, it was a really dark, dark place. Um, and over the next few years, I kind of stumbled on um, some of the things that we talk about um, in the three principles world um, for myself. But it was a very slow and piecemeal kind of experience. And then I, I don't know. We, we kind of got. We, we've known each other for a long time as well, Marie. But we weren't sort of um, such close friends as we are now. And I think we became closer at the point that you, um, you, you split up with your husband. And and um, perhaps it'd be nice to hear a little bit about your your experience. Yeah, I mean, I think it was that Christian. Obviously, you know, and for anyone who's listening, that you told me about the three principles, and it was around the time that. I was breaking up, um, Nick and I were breaking up with each other. So um, it, the two coincided together. So it's been interesting over the last um, four, maybe five, maybe four or five years, something like that. It's been, the two have gone in parallel, the kind of uh, looking after the children, not necessarily more alone, but, you know, as a, as an, as a separated person and then also beginning to understand the principles, which I think is, has has been cumulative the understanding has been growing as the as time's been going by and so um my understanding of the principles i feel like it's become a much stronger and stronger support over those years and um as and, and in parallel the, the parenting has become easier um because of the principles i think and it's and I think really helped by me being told about the principles by somebody who, like such as yourself who'd been through this experience. So when you're saying, you know, in the early days when some of it was my, you, you, you being able to point out that possibly some of it was my thinking, I could hear that better from you because I knew you, because I knew you'd been through it too. Mm -hmm. So you, it wasn't, um, you weren't saying, you were saying it from a place of really understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, and, um, at the, 
all of us are always doing, you know, doing the best we can with, with what we know, in, in, including me. But I can see today how I unwittingly made my situation much worse than it needed to be because mm. I was probably on a daily basis um, going far beyond dealing with what I needed to do to, to do on that day but I had a massive amount of regret and confusion and resentment about the past and I and, and, and no awareness that it wasn't compulsory to indulge those kind of thinkings mm. thoughts and I also had an absolute terror about about the future you know yeah. all of the statistics you know you know talked about and, and, and um how you know single parent families did worse on every index you know it was just um every index and um um I, you know I just had this um absolute terror about what, what was going to sort of become of us um and it was also compounded by what appeared to be going on around me because uh, you know I, was to, I, I became very isolated um you know there, there was a sense that of you know after i picked up the kids from school or nursery and you know, at work and kind of closed the door like we ceased to exist in the eyes mm -hmm. of the world and um and i remember um later hearing uh, hearing a man talk about going blind and and although he was an incredibly resilient and resourceful person he said i still don't like to think about the time that it happened because because of the um the isolation and how people really did <laughs> sort of move away and i you know i felt some of that and i and and, and what i didn't know then but i understand better now was that even if it was true that 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 um friends were falling away less interested or whatever it didn't have to mean that i became depressed and miserable about that um but it was only insofar as i thought it had to mean which might sound a bit convoluted but it's um you know i was so i was i was also sort of on a daily basis as it were ruminating on my you know my isolation and um that you know the, the apparent unfairness so um so instead of just dealing with what what was in front of me and 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 um you know, doing what i needed to do in order to get through the day and even take care of myself and build in some sort of joy and fulfillment for you know for myself i you know had this past and future and comparison with others you know going on all the time and and, and that was the 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 bit I, I now see that that made it utterly intolerable you know just this um you know this this terrible kind of maelstrom of just hideous that's running around my head all the time yeah i mean i, I think that's quite similar to what i felt as well especially the thing you said about the past losing you know thinking back to the past thinking I think one of the things we said just before we came on the call, that idea of not quite understanding. So, so from the breakup point of view, really thinking I needed to understand why and how it happened in order for it never to happen again. And, and not being able to settle because I couldn't understand that. And then on top of it, the, I had the thought that I'm not naturally a good parent, <laughs> which is a really, was a really difficult one. And, and actually, some of it I didn't even know what I was thinking, but it was lots of there was lots of invisible thinking around that about not being a very good parent, mm -hmm. about the most important thing being a good parent and being a better parent maybe than some of the ways I've been parented. Although I see some of that differently now, and then the future as well, the idea of no future. But I think also with separation, as in addition to all that, you might say that's true of any kinds of grief or bereavement or loss. But I think with with breaking up, especially we both live in an area where it's is very nuclear family orientated and I think people are quite tribal you know and actually so being there is a there was an additional layer of social worry and shame which I w wouldn't have thought was I, I wouldn't have thought I would have had so much of that because I think I can be quite independent but actually that was quite strong that thinking as well about being you know having failed so being a, a kind of shame of having failed which may you know, I'm not comparing, I don't know what it's like to lose a partner through death, but 
you know, I think if you break up, you feel like you could have should have been able to solve it. And so you've kind of somehow done you and you between you, you've, you know, there's a blame element on yourself and other people, even if nobody else is blaming you, I felt to blame and it was kind of invisible, but it was always there. So, you know, look, I'm unhappy and it's my own fault or it's your fault or it's, there's an extra tension that was very hard to find peace with for a while. And then on top of that, the actual practicalities mm. of managing, like you say, which, which I think like, you, you know, we are designed to be able to cope with those, but maybe not those on top of all that, all that unnecessary thinking. Yeah. 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 Which made it feel unmanageable. And then that seemed further proof that, the future wasn't ever going to be okay and it's really interesting understanding and I think more and more and even recently a lot more the role of thought and and that how everything is thought <laughs> you know so all of that thinking was thought you know mm-hmm. all of it and and the urgency and the and the urgent quality to the thought now I can see as a sign that it wasn't the truth you know it was um it was lots and lots of intense thinking about the situation and it was repetitive thoughts, you know, and um, hopeless thoughts, you know, compared to the, in, since and understand the principles of the new thinking that's been able to come in, which is to which questions the, the intensity and the truth of, of the other thinking. So, you know, actually in my way, I am a natural parent. We all are natural parents. It's just finding our way of being an, Ourself, you know, it's finding our version of being a parent that's enjoyable. And I know this weekend particularly, I just, for the first time, I think probably, I had some amazing, exquisite feelings of being with my children, or for the first time seeing them more, because it was always probably like that. And actually, um, beginning, you know, over the, the period of time to really question some of those false beliefs, you know, that, that kind of um, hidden thinking around the idea that you know you've really failed if you've if you've not got two parents together with the kids you know that's not necessarily true how you can how my one-to-one relationship with them and the good relationship I have formed with their dad can could actually be the best thing and it could actually be better than what we could have done together and maybe there has been a wisdom in this mm. to, to get into this situation and, and having some faith in that you know it's having some faith in that new fresh thinking that's coming and some um and the peace that that brings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's interesting because as I say, I I kind of stumbled on bits and pieces of what, uh, you know, I would have these insights. It was about 10 years after I uh, split up with my ex, father of my children, before I discovered the principles a little more. And during that time, I, I, I stumbled on these little bits and pieces, or sometimes quite big bits and pieces, of what I now see as a, as a kind of greater whole, an explanation of the whole of how, um, of how human beings work. But one of them was, um, I had an insight, I've really got to start listening to myself rather than trying to do the right thing, which is just a subtly different, um, a subtly different place to come from. And, and that insight, it was really powerful. And, and I kind of, it was like it was it wasn't a voice inside my head, but it was almost like that. It was almost as clear and simple as that. And um and, and at the same time I thought, yes, yes, I've got I'm going to do that. And it sort of changed things for me. It began, you know, the, the sort of freedom came from that. And today, you know, when I since I've come across the, the inside out understanding the three principles, which is um, you, you know, this, this idea that all of us are built to thrive and we have this capacity for insight and fresh thinking just built in. Um, you know, I see that it was coming from there. Um, and another, another insight that I had was one night, as I said, I'd always had this sort of cherished dream of the happy family, the kind of Walton-esque thing, you know, corny as that is. And then one night we, are, we live in a little, you know, a, a, um, a three bed semi, so all the bedrooms are upstairs next to each other. And um, one night we were doing the night mom, love you, night, love you. And I thought it is just like it is actually a bit like the Waltons, but it's just a smaller version. It's just a very small, the three of us. And, I, you know, I saw that we were, we had become a happy 
single parent family. You know, somehow that had happened um, by just, you know, keeping on, keeping on. And, and, and I, as I see it now, following the, the, the wisdom that did present itself, although I didn't have that, that wouldn't have been the way I'd have described it there, you know, a, a bit at a time, you know, following one of the things I found very difficult, for example, was that it was the lack of time to myself. You know, my, my, um, my kids only went to their fathers every second weekend. So, you know, for, for kind of 12 days in a stretch, it was my responsibility. You know, it was a 24 seven responsibility. But gradually I began to be able to carve out tiny bits of time. Like I'd have a babysitter once a week. So I went to this dance class and it was <laughs> the babysitter and everything else was costing me a fortune, but it was still worth it. You know, it, it was, it was doing something different and, um, you know, but just little things like that, you know, in the, in the holidays or on those weekends, I really maximized it. So I felt, I found that it was possible to be doing interesting things and having a life to the extent that one of my friends said to me once, she herself was married with kids, she said, Christian, you've got the best social life I know of anyone I know. And, and I kind of thought, I mean, whether or not that was entirely true, there was something of truth about it. I certainly wasn't, you, you know, um, I wasn't out every night or anything like that, but I was, you know, being creative with the limited time that I have. So I'm kind of getting off message, but what I, what, when I discovered the, the three principles, I saw that everything had, that had helped me was... Um, explained in this in, in this understanding of how humans work that we have this capacity to thrive that's immense this capacity for ingenuity whatever our circumstances mm -hmm. that the capacity to be at peace in the face of anything the capacity to solve problems to love and connect and mm -hmm. and i think more importantly for me maybe not more importantly but the bit that had been completely missing from my life previously was seeing that my my felt experience my feelings in the moment were not caused by anything outside myself but by um how i was thinking the thought that the, the, the totality of thought visible or visible conscious or unconscious was running through me and if i was unhappy no matter how clear the connection um, between that unhappiness and my circumstances seemed that was a false connection. Yeah. And once I got that, the, the, the potential and the freedom was, was really huge. Yeah. I mean, I think there's two, two things I wanted to say in what, what you've said. The first one is the, that thing about the loving connection. I think the most important thing in life is that loving connection, isn't it? And one of the most important things as a parent and as a potential partner um, or co-parent or whatever happens maybe in maybe in this area more than work or anything else is to be able to come from that true place in yourself and have that loving connection and that's I think one of the fears when and the fearful thinking I had when we first separated was you know I'm going to be in a bad place her dad's going to be in a bad place they're going to be in a bad place you know and it's all going to be awful and I think one of the great things I found through the principles was you know that thing about not being broken and that default setting is a place of wonderful place of well-being you know we've now come to experience the moments which is fantastic and so actually knowing that knowing that you've got that means it's all going to be okay whatever isn't it so actually even if we are now moving forward being separated and and even with new insight for the principles, knowing that maybe that was that could have been avoided if if we'd had this understanding. But anyway, we are where we are, and you can build on, on a bright future with that loving connection. That's an example, like being like the Waltons or whatever. Because the thing that they had was this idea that they were a loving, connected family, weren't they? And actually, never mind who all the players are, even if it's one adult and two children, then it's the other adult and two children, and sometimes all of us together. If that loving connection's able to be there, then then almost learning that and has been is more important than whether we'd stay together or not actually for the children I think and for everybody it's the most important thing and I think maybe it has taken I don't know if it's taken that it, it, it certainly the pain I think was so great that I, I really wanted to commit to understanding the principles because I didn't want to be in that pain of feeling like the past was a failure the future was a failure and, and the one thing I wanted to succeed at like you said of having children and giving them a good future I'd failed at it's mm. very difficult to move on from that amount of hopelessness I think and so actually understanding though there is hope but you know 
a loving connection in the moment, which becomes possible when there's more, for me, more peace of mind and less reactivity to everything and thinking everything's coming from my circumstances. Instead, knowing you can come from the inside and that place means that there's, that anything's possible, no matter what circumstances or what, no, what, no matter what the shape of the family. Um, so that's the most amazing, hopeful thing, I think, um, that's come out from understanding the principles and, and, and it all the time more becomes revealed, I think, you know, and as the children get older and it can be so joyful in a way that I didn't know it could be, you know, and actually in a way the connection can still be really strong, you know, even with Nick, you know, it can still be, because it's all based around something really positive, which is wanting the best for the children. Yeah. Maybe we couldn't have done that if we were together. So, you know, um, it's really changed. I can't remember what the second point I was going to make was, but that loving connection feels like the most important thing. Yeah. 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 That and, and actually the other thing I've had insight about actually that was this weekend is we isn't strictly to being a parent, but um, it's interesting. I've had so much, so much insight about my, the trouble I can cause. And that doesn't mean, I, I don't think, not from a brokenness, not thinking, oh, I'm broken and I'm awful or anything, not an over-exaggerated sense of my own responsibility, but just the truth of my own, um, the impact of some of my own invisible thinking can have on the way I behave in relationships and the way I can be in the world. And it's been really it felt like a bit of a delight to see it actually, strangely, even though it sounds like, you know, um, you know, for instance, one of my daughters, I think I've talked to you about her before. I, I always thought, oh gosh, she seems, um, you know, she's got all this physical energy that she's not using and she's got no confidence. And, and this is an example of what can happen in lots of relationships, I think. So I'm, so I'm thinking, oh, I need to her to understand the principles and, and then actually just somehow getting an insight, actually, if I could just be at more peace when I'm with her, that's enough. I don't have to tell her anything about the, the principles. And in fact, sometimes when I'm thinking, worrying about her, it's a sign, it's a sign of where I need to be. It's a really good sign of what I need to do in myself, you know, which is just to settle again to what I, where I know the truth is. And st- and I've obviously got caught up in some kind of thinking generally, yeah. worrying about her. So rather than building on the worry and thinking I then have to change her, actually, if I just settle into myself, because a lot of the ways she is is ways I can be when I'm overthinking things, you know, and actually just getting into my own peace and showing her another way. Well, not even showing her, just being in my own peace is much more helpful to, the, to everybody, you know, and it's, um, I've really seen that this weekend and thought, you know, the irony of thinking I need to tell other people about the principle. <laughs> <laughs> you and me mostly both. when I have that thought, I'm not feeling very peaceful. I'm not saying you have to be peaceful, but I'm mostly caught up in some thinking. So it's a bit yeah. of a sign to actually just settle. And um, Yeah, it's so, it's so interesting that, you know, because um, me, me too this weekend, you know, I was spending some time with my son, which was delightful. But at one point he was just doing some things which I thought weren't a good idea. And, um, you know, I was attempting to have a conversation with them and uh, with them about it. And, um, and, and I was genuinely coming from a place of, you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure this was, is helpful to you, but it's nevertheless, it has a quality of sort of pushing and ego and I know better. And, you know, almost not, maybe not urgency, but importance that this, you know, that something change. And of course we kind of both got into it. Not, I mean, not, we didn't have, even have a row. It wasn't anything like that, but there was just a a, a sort of, I was kind of thinking, you know, in myself, oh, oh my God, I know where all this goes, you know, (laughs) which I actually don't. (laughs) But and and it's you know I also love that thing that I came across in the middle. All of us are going up and down and up and down and up and down all the time. I I loved the acceptance in that, that the sort of humanity in that, and that there's nothing to be done or changed. So that that's applying to all of us. And so now, in retrospect, I would say we were both not majorly in a low place, but just you know caught up in our thinking to some to some extent. And then later in the day, we were at home and we were watching something. I'm watching a film, and um, and I was just conscious of being in that, feeling that deep connection that you've just described. You know, loving him, grateful for being 
they are grateful for being a mother you know just um, grateful for everything and and what I'd been thinking about earlier in the day which had seemed so important um was just utter irrelevant trivia you know? yeah. <laughs> I just thought now, isn't that interesting and even knowing oh, you know, well we know today I can still go there and at the time it seems so real because that's the way the system works that whatever thoughts are being entertained are brought to life in a in an absolutely compelling way and I suppose that one of the values of knowing what we know is that just it's that um there's just enough there's just enough of inkling of common sense to to that stops me usually from really getting in there you know escalating there's a, a point that thinks I you know <laughs> maybe this isn't the most reliable thinking in the <laughs> the history of the world going yeah. on right now the quality of it feels slightly fast doesn't it and yeah. wanting to solve something and as uh -huh. soon as that's there it's a bit of a sign yeah 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 um, and i and i i think you know we've both spoken about this before but the there's such joy in coming to see that who we are who i am and who the people in my life are it's not the lowest point so join the dots of all the lowest points which is kind of how i saw life you know and and, and i think we live at a time where there's a sort of a, a you know a bit of an agenda that's the culture you know people are judged by you know <laughs> this bad behavior and that bad behavior and yeah. something and and to me it, it, the only thing it means now is that the, the bad behavior is an indication of the the um the quality of thinking in that moment but actually who people are is that who they are at that default state as the thinking falls away the the the, the core essential person emerges and it's always nicer mm. warmer kinder easier to connect with. yeah i think it's it fun gracefulness, yeah mm -hmm. the gracefulness in people when they're at their feet when they're at ease isn't there yeah yeah um, yeah and, and I like what you said then about being a mother, about being um, grateful for being a mother, because I think I lost some of that in it all. In the, the, well, all, all felt a bit lost. And actually, when you realise through the principles, it, it's not all lost. You know, there's, you know, I still have that, that fee, you know, the feeling I had it when I gave birth, you know, to my three daughters every, that day. And I really had that feeling. It was like life is complete. I could die now. There's nothing else I need. This is the... That lovely loving connection feeling was so strong, wasn't it? I don't know if you had that too, yeah, but absolutely, that's, absolutely. that's like that's like a really intense version of the loving connection that can still be there on a daily basis. Um, mm -hmm. on well, all the time actually, and the thinking clouds it away sometimes, but actually it's still there, and so all isn't lost, you know. Actually, and I, you know, we've got we, you know we've got children, and they're doing well, and they're thriving, and yeah, there's hope. You know, I think it's a message of hope that's very important for people if they're maybe newly separated or still. If they say they're listening to this and they've got lots of thinking about it, it's, and and it was really great that I had you because you know sometimes on Saturday nights or <laughs> you know when it felt feels like the thinking is oh everybody else in the world is in a nuclear family watching Strictly come dancing together or something. <laughs> I'm just now yeah, yeah, my life's over, you know, and I've failed them and and they were annoying each other, you know, it just then <laughs> you know you say oh it's not necessarily going to be that way, you know, <laughs> it's like put a chink in. It just started to challenge that thinking, and then when that thinking is challenged and loosens, then what's behind it is the loving connection. Which yeah, is, which, is, which is everything that's needed, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because in that is wisdom and peace and grace and ease and the ability to cope with anything, and the ability to see how to cope with anything. Yeah. Which is just a message of such joy and hope, isn't it? And, yeah. and then and actually, in the end, it doesn't make that much difference whether. In some ways, it doesn't make that much difference whether me and their dad are together. What makes a difference is how we are as parents, mm -hmm. how we are as people, how we live our lives. And if we can live our lives well apart, then that is better for everybody and be better parents. And that's a happy ending. It's a happier ending, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's now years since that, that, that separation took place. And I, I, my, my kids have thrived in a way that, you know, beyond my wildest dreams. And, you know, they're still living their lives and they'll have their ups and downs and all the rest of it. But, it, it, you know, it's, it, it's um, I, and I just mentioned that just to show how, you know, how ridiculous and how unrelated to, to 
the way it would actually play out all my fears were yet at the time I thought this is responsible it's responsible to think about this it would be irresponsible not to it's intelligent it's um and and today I see it as you know as anything as anything but it, it just destroyed the you know the the, the joy that seeps the joy out of out of those days then mm. um and children are a great um offer a great leadership in this don't they because they do just live quite often in the moment yeah and they do just want to find the best out of a situation just naturally you know they might they were sad you know and they, they still sometimes are upset about moving between and so we try to make that as easy as possible practically but they you know they have you know, fantastic benefits and the full attention of one parent which was another thing i remember you saying the benefit of that they become the center of things which sometimes can't happen in families when couples are together because they've got other issues they've got illness they've got or whatever they've got their own thinking going on about what their situation is and the children aren't at the center but just seeing that they can be at the center and we can enjoy them feeling loved and enjoyed really is pretty important isn't it mm -hmm. you manage to do that with the children yeah 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 whatever works to make that happen mm -hmm. And if you were to, if you were um, to give one um, make one suggestion or one pointer to someone who found themselves newly in this in this situation, what would that be, Marie? Well, it would be if it, if they if they're feeling low and they're having lots of thinking about the, about what's happened and what the future might be in a bleak sense, then then it would be really good for them to find out a bit more about the three principles and to see for themselves what their insight might be when some of that thinking calms down and when, it, when they are able to get some clear space and some, see what fresh insights and fresh thinking they can have about it would be a real benefit for them before making any decisions and before, and before spending any more time thinking that life's going to be hopeless for them because there's always hope. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Yeah. yeah, that's a lovely place to, to leave it. Shall we just leave it there? Okay. Thanks. Thank you.